Community Health Worker Training, Cardiovascular Health and Diabetes, Module 4A, Atrial Fibrillation. Learning Outcomes. For this mini module, explain what atrial fibrillation is. Atrial fibrillation is also called AFib. What is AFib? It's the most common type of heart arrhythmia. An arrhythmia is when the heart beats in an abnormal rhythm. During an arrhythmia, the heart can beat too fast, which is also called tachycardia, too slow, bradycardia, or with an irregular rhythm, but a normal rate. Let's review how the normal heart works so we can better understand what happens with atrial fibrillation when the heart is not working properly. Click on this video and watch it and then come back to the PowerPoint. We'll start with the basics and examine how the human heart works. The heart is a muscle about the size of a clenched fist that is located under the rib cage in between the lungs. It is divided into a left side and a right side. Each side has two chambers. The upper chambers are called atria and the lower chambers are called ventricles. Blood flows from the atria to the ventricles through one-way valves. The atria and the ventricles work together as a team to pump blood through the heart. The right atrium receives oxygen-depleted blood from the body and pushes it into the right ventricle, which pumps it out to the lungs. Oxygen-enriched blood is returned from the lungs to the left atrium, which pushes it into the left ventricle, where it is pumped back out to the body. After the body has used all the oxygen in the blood, the blood returns to the heart and the cycle repeats. In a normal heart, this sequence occurs 60 to 100 times per minute. The heart's beating rhythms are driven by electrical impulses within the heart. In a normal heart rhythm, electrical signals originate in the heart's natural pacemaker, the sinoatrial node, also called SA node. These electrical signals travel from the atria to the ventricles in a defined rhythmic pattern. The electrical signals pass through the atrioventricle, or AV node. The AV node acts as a natural gatekeeper for the heart, through which all the heart's electrical signals normally pass. The electrical signals then pass through the bundle of his to the Purkinje fibers, which cause the heart muscles to contract. There are many factors that contribute to proper heart function. Talk to your physician about your heart health and steps you can take to keep your heart healthy and strong. So let's review how the blood flows through the heart when everything's working the way it's supposed to. And this is a little bit of a busy slide because the heart is a complex organ, so I'm gonna draw on it for you. So blood returns to the heart through two big vessels, actually one vessel that goes in two directions called the vena cava. So here's the inferior or bottom part of it, and here's the superior or top part of it that's bringing the blood back from the top part of the body. So that blood that the oxygen has been taken out of, right, and left in the different tissue, that blood comes back to the heart to get oxygenated again. And it spills into the top portion on the right, whenever we're saying right and left, we're talking about the patient's right and left, okay, on the top right, and that's called the right atrium. And then it goes through this valve, and don't worry too much about the names of the different valves, but understand that valves are like one-way doors, that when they're functioning properly, they close after the blood goes through so that the blood can't slip back and start going in the wrong direction. So the blood goes from the right atria into the right ventricle down here. The ventricles, which are the two bottom parts of the heart, have the strongest pumping action, and they're a little bit bigger than the atria you can see. So the heart, when it pumps again, then pushes the blood, which hasn't gotten oxygen yet, up through the pulmonary artery, and it goes through there, out to the lungs. Okay, they don't have the lungs drawn on here, but it goes out to the lungs. Okay, we'll make a lung over here, where the blood gets oxygenated. Okay, so now the blood coming back from the lung comes back through the pulmonary veins on both sides, right? So 
on the right and the left over here. Okay. And that oxygenated blood spills into the left atria, which is the top of the heart. It's a little hard to see on this drawing, but it's up here. Okay. And then it passes from the left atria down into the left ventricle. And then with a very strong pumping action, it is pumped up into the aorta, which is a very large artery. And then from the aorta, it goes back to the rest of the body. And now it's carrying oxygen again. So to simplify, the blood comes from the body into the right atrium, down into the right ventricle, out to the lungs, back from the lungs into the left atria, then to the left ventricle, and then out to the body. So we know that this happens from the video that you just watched by kind of electrical pathways that stimulate coordinated contractions of the different parts of the heart muscle. But how does the heart maintain that normal, healthy rhythm? Um, the heart's electrical system controls the timing, right, of the blood flow through the heart because it controls the timing of the contractions of the different parts of the heart. And the electrical system keeps that heart rate regular, and it also keeps the rhythm of the heartbeat regular. A normal heart rate for an adult is 60 to 100 beats per minute. And here's just a little breakdown, uh, reviewing what was in the in the video that you watched. So the the heartbeat electrical system starts in the right atrium at the sinus node. You can see it right up here, and it's also called the pacemaker. That's the normal kind of built-in pacemaker of the heart, and that's what initiates the electrical signals that instruct the beat the heart to beat and instruct which parts of the heart to beat when. And you can see from this picture, right, that it's sending electrical signals to all the different parts of the heart. And here's another, another node called an AV node that helps to also coordinate the pumping action or the contraction of the different heart parts. So what happens with an arrhythmia? A heart arrhythmia is when problems with the heart's electrical system causes irregular contractions of the different parts of the heart muscle and uncoordinated contractions. And heart arrhythmias occur when the heart chambers are not beating in a coordinated way. And what you're seeing in this picture here on the left is an EKG and that's actually measuring which parts of the heart are contracting when and the readout is on the right. So click on this video and it's gonna show you exactly what's happening in the heart when somebody has AFib. Okay, so what's happening in particular with the electrical system of the heart and hopefully you'll be able to then picture it better. A healthy heart works continuously to pump blood around the body by beating regularly under the control of electrical impulses that originate from the sinoatrial or SA node, the heart's natural pacemaker. These impulses radiate from the top to the bottom of the heart in a coordinated way. Each heartbeat consists of two stages where blood enters the atria, which subsequently contract and forces blood into the ventricles. These in turn also contract, forcing blood out of the heart into the pulmonary and systemic circulations. In atrial fibrillation, electrical impulses do not originate in the sinoatrial or SA node, but from a different part of the atrium or in the nearby pulmonary veins. These abnormal electrical signals become rapid and disorganized, radiating through the atrial walls in an uncoordinated manner. This can cause the walls of the atria to fibrillate or quiver rapidly rather than contracting normally. Electrical signals are transmitted irregularly from the atria to the ventricles, which both fail to contract in a synchronized way. During atrial fibrillation, because the atria do not contract regularly, blood does not empty efficiently into the ventricles and begins to pool in the atria, especially in the atrial appendages. This pooling of blood can cause clots to form, 
which, if dislodged, can travel in the bloodstream towards the brain. The clot, or embolus, can potentially obstruct narrow blood vessels, often the middle cerebral artery, or its branches, and prevent the normal flow of blood. The reduced supply of blood and oxygen to a particular part of the brain can result in tissue death, leading to ischemic stroke.